Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, let's dive into the problem best time to buy and sell stock with cooldown. Let's first quickly discuss the input output format and we'll start to build up to a solution. The first thing we're given is prices. This is going to be a list of integer values which basically dictate how up or down the price of a stock goes. As simple as that. The goal of this problem is to maximize the amount of profit you can get by buying and selling the stock. So just to formalize, we have three different operations. We can either buy the stock, we can either sell the stock or we can hold the stock. So these are the three operations we want to think about. There are also two more conditions which are going to get important later on. The first thing is uh, we want to specify the number of stocks to either be zero or one. What this means is you can either have zero amount of stocks or one amount of stocks in your portfolio. You cannot have anything more than that. This is a simple constraint, but this is going to get very important later on. The second thing we have is cooldown, which basically says that once you sell, you have to take a holiday the next day. You basically have to hold in the next day. And after that, you can do whatever you want. So this is the one particular constraint that is also important. Let's actually look at this particular sample case and we'll try to see what has happened and how we got the answer of three as mentioned previously. Okay. Let's try to uh, see how we can buy and sell this. So at the time equals to zero point, we have this particular, uh, the price of the stock is one. So let's say that I decide to buy this stock. This is going to get me a profit of minus one since I spent some money buying the stock from the market. That's fine. On the second day, I can go ahead and sell this stock. Again, this is the decision I choose to make. So I went ahead and sold the stock for a profit of two. Again, uh, very simple, but okay. Once I've sold the stock, I have to take a holiday the next day. So we'll skip over this point and then we'll jump on to time equals to three. At this point, I have to again make a decision whether to buy, sell or hold. So I'm going to make a decision to either I'm going to take, say, let's say that I'm going to buy the stock at this particular point. So, sorry, not this, I'm going to buy at this point. And at the later point of time, the very next day, I can go ahead and sell that. So this is going to be uh, minus zero because I spent zero units of money to buy the stock from the market at this point of time. And I sold it at a profit of two. So this is what we get. The thing is, uh, it is going to get us a total profit of minus one plus two plus two, which is three. And this is the answer that we see over here. Now that we have finally understood the, what the problem means and how we can go about it, let's actually look at a couple of observations to start to build things up. Let's look at this case where we only have a single element in the entire list. So we're only looking at the market for one day. What is the best option to do? Again, we have three options. We can either buy, we can either sell, or we can either hold. We cannot obviously sell because we don't have any stocks to begin with. Our amount of stocks starts off with zeros. So we can't sell, but we can go ahead and buy the stock with the cost of minus one. Or we can decide to hold this, getting us a cost of zero. Finally, the answer is going to be minus one in this case and zero in this case. And clearly holding comes out to be the better option. In fact, is there anything specific to one or can I just write X over here? Can I say that for any element, which is the only element in the array, like if it is this kind of case, can I always say that the answer is zero? Yes, I can say that. Feel free to try it out yourself. So we are going to go ahead and write this out saying that if the length of the prices is the same as one. There's only one single element in the list, then return zero. Cool. We are off to a good start. We have already something figured out. Let's keep going. Now let's say that we are in the case of one comma two. In this case, let's say that I decide to buy the stock at point one. This is going to get me a cost of minus one. And in the very next day, I decide to sell the stock. This is going to get me a plus two giving me the total answer of one, which is the best possible answer for this particular question. 
this was a fairly simple example uh, nothing too special finally let's take the case of 1 comma 2 comma 3 this is the case where things will get a bit more interesting so be more attentive let's say that we are this point 1 and i decide to buy this stock so it will get me a cost of minus 1 when we are at this point 2 what do i do do i buy the stock well i can't buy the stock so the only two possibilities are either i sell or i hold which one do i do well if i sell i can book a profit of plus two can book a profit of plus two right away and be happy with my life or i can hold get a profit of plus zero and hope that maybe in a later iteration as we have in this case i can get a score of plus three so it looks like it's a better idea to hold in this case but again, at this point of time, at this particular point of time, I don't know which of them is the better answer. And I want this ability to sort of look into the future. When I'm at this current point of time, if I have the ability to look into the future, saying that the stock market will go up or down, I can then decide to buy or sell, right? I can look at this point, I have already bought the stock. So now I'm looking at the market. If in the future, I know it is going to go up, then I'm going to wait and when it's at the maximum point, I'm going to sell it then. Or if I know the market is going to go down, I'll sell it right away today. I'll be done with this. By the way, if you figure out how to do this in real markets, please feel free to contact me. But for now, uh, we're going to look at this property of looking into the future. And as you've seen numerous times on my channel, whenever we want to do this sort of looking forward into the future, we always, always think about recursion. So let's go ahead and write recurs down which is going to be a function and can return recurs. Okay. So, okay. What does this recursion mean? Well, it's clear that we want to look into the future to know whether uh, the price will go up and down. And depending upon that, our goal was to return the maximum possible profits. Okay. So this means that I want this recursion to return me the amount of profits. This is the return type of the function. Uh, what more? Let's actually write it down in a bit more concrete way. Let's take the case of 1, 2, 3, 0, 2 and we'll try to see what happens. In the case of 1, let's say that we are at this particular index. What all decisions can I make? Can I buy the stock? Yes, I can buy the stock. Wait, why can I buy the stock? Let me actually show you this condition which as I said, it's going to become important later on and it's important now. So we'll keep that in mind. See, the stock can only be 0 or 1. Initially, the stock was zero, so I bought the stock. And let's say that I, because I bought the stock, I can now go to these two particular points. I cannot go to buy again, right? Because stock can either be zero or one. So I cannot buy two times. It can either buy and then sell or hold. So at this point of time, again, if I've decided to sold, uh, sell the stock, I have to go to hold. And from this point, again, I can start to make more and more decisions. So this is the sort of structure we're going to follow. At each point of time, we are making a decision to buy, sell or hold, depending upon what is the current status of stocks. See, when can I sell? Let me write it this way. Let's say that the stock is zero or one and we'll try to see what all decisions we can make in that case. So we have buy, sell and hold as three particular options. Let me bring it for you over here. Uh, we have buy, sell and hold as three particular options that we can check. When we have zero stocks beforehand, we can either buy or we can hold. We cannot sell because we don't have anything. Similarly, when we have one stock beforehand, we can either sell or we can hold. Make sense? So it looks like keeping a track of how many stocks there are is important as well as what is the current index we're looking at. Let's actually write this down. saying that I want to keep a track of I, the index, and the current status of stock, whether it's zero or one. Now I'm going to go ahead and return the maximum possible profit when I get from these three decisions, buy, sell, and hold. So buy is going to be, uh, what is buy going to be? Well, buy will going, is going to incur a cost of uh, prices of I. Basically, to buy the stock, I had to uh, 
like spend some money in the market to get the stock. So I'm going to do prices of minus i. And I'm going to say, now I have the stock. Now I can go ahead and recurse. I can go ahead and recurse into the future. So I'm going to do i plus one over here. I'm going to look one step in the future and I'll set the stock to one because now I have one stocks in the inventory. This can only happen when the amount of stocks previously was zero. Else, I'm going to set it to negative infinity. In this line, what I'm trying to say is, okay, go ahead and make this buy decision if you can. When can you make this buy decision? If stock equals to equals to zero, if you don't have anything in the portfolio, then you can go ahead and buy the stock right now and we'll spend prices amount of money. So I'm going to do minus sign here to account for that because I'm spending money to buy the stock. I'm going to set the stock equals to one over here. As simple as that. Now, how can I sell a stock? Quite the similar way. I can sell the stock gaining a profit of plus prices and I'm going to recurse into the future setting the number of stocks to be zero because I just sold the stock we had. And we can only do that when stock equals to one, else infinity. Um, if you write this, this will be incorrect because there is one more condition that we want to focus on. This is the cool down condition saying that once you have sold the stock, you have to forcefully take a holiday the next day and only then you can buy and you can do whatever you want from the very next day onwards. So there has to be this uh, break in between of one extra day where you can't do anything. So this in fact is not going to be i plus one, but i plus two. Then we finally have hold over here, which says that uh, I'm going to get a profit or cost of zero and I'm going to go recurs into the future saying i plus one and the stock value does not change. So we are also going to write the base case of this recursion function. When does this end? Since i is going to continue increase by one from zero, like we're starting from the time zero and we're going all the way. So whenever i is greater than or equals to n, we can return uh, zero. n is the length of the prices list. Finally, we're going to initialize this recursion with zero, zero, saying that we're looking at the time zero and the amount of stocks we're starting off with is zero. And in this way, I think we can finally go ahead and run this guy. Finally, uh, Okay, the syntax is correct. So now I can apply LRU cache since there can be overlapping sub problems. Let's try running this on basic sample cases and we'll try submitting this. Cool, this works out and gets us a runtime of 48 milliseconds. So yeah, this is pretty much it for the problem. Best time to buy and sell stock with cooldown. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more daily videos, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.